are having a good day. Welcome to Nature Nuggets. Uh, today we are going to be talking about wetlands. So instead of looking at a specific group of animals like we've done in the past, we're going to be looking at a specific habitat type. And for today, that's going to be wetlands. Now, just a reminder, habitat is the area that an animal lives in. It includes um, the water, the the plants, the soil, all of that are important factors in determining what type of habitat it is. And all the animals that reside in a, habit, in a habitat are adapted to live there. They have um, specific adaptations, okay, and adaptations are characteristics about their body or their behavior that make them good at surviving in this type of an environment. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about what wetlands are, um, what makes them special, and then of course we're going to dive into the animals that we'll find in a wetland. So first thing first, it might seem very simple, but we need to talk about what is a wetland? What's a definition? And it really is easy. A wetland is land that's wet. Or a better definition might be where land and water meet. So um, wetlands tend to be shallow areas. They're soil that becomes waterlogged. So either um, the soil might be made of, have a lot of clay where it doesn't let water pass through very much. So water collects. Or sometimes we also have um, peat moss that absorbs soil. So I have actually some sphagnum moss that we would find in like a bog. And this is very absorbent. That means it holds a lot, a lot of water. Um, so you have areas that are covered in this and those areas retain water and they stay wet for um, either art all of the year or they stay wet for longer than the area around it. So we can also have wetlands that dry up for part of the year. So real easy where land and water meet. And I do want to point out, let me show you guys this. So this diagram is of an aquatic ecosystem. So like our pond, our pond that we have at the museum. Um, and aquatic ecosystems are not necessarily wetlands. They are, there is a difference. So aquatic ecosystems like lakes and ponds and rivers uh, tend to be deeper where wetlands are shallower. So wetlands are kind of defined by the plants that we find there. So a lot of times we can find wetlands at the edge of these areas where the land and the water are meeting. So we have our pond here and then along the edge we see all these grasses, right? Um, or these reeds. So along the edge you have kind of a wetland area. So wetlands can be very, very big or they can be very small, just like the edge here. So that's an important distinction to make, although a lot of the animals that live in wetlands we can also find in aquatic ecosystems and vice versa. So let's look at our wetland picture again. Now, in order to make a wetland, you need three main ingredients, right? We need land and water for this land that's wet, but we also need plants. So these areas that become waterlogged, that hold a lot of water, a lot of moisture, there are certain plants that are adapted to live in those conditions. And so they kind of help colonize an area and that's what creates an, a habitat that's good for all of these animals. Now wetlands tend to be very productive ecosystems. That means that they provide a lot of food uh, for wildlife. A lot of times the water coming through here, because there's so much water, there's all this plant growth, which provides lots of nutrients for other animals, lots of food. In fact, a lot of animals use wetlands as a nursery, an area where they can raise their young, where there's lots of food and they can raise their young, um, and safety. So that's one function of a wetland is it provides uh, food
food, a productive ecosystem. It provides a nursery for our wildlife. But wetlands also do some very other important things for us. So we've talked about how um, the wetland soil is very good at trapping water and holding water. We say often that wetlands work like a giant sponge. They hold water. So like if you got a sponge and you dipped it in the, like a bowl full of water, it would soak up that water. And the reason that's important for us is because that can help prevent flooding. So uh, if we have heavy rain come through, instead of all that water um, running off somewhere, because the water has to go somewhere, wetlands can absorb a lot of that water and prevent other areas from flooding. So other um, cities and towns. So these are actually really important. And for a long time, people didn't know this, and we would just build over wetlands. We thought that they were useless areas. Um, but they do provide an important function in that sense is they soak up water and prevent flooding. The other really important thing they do for both us and the environment is wetlands often work as a filter to filter out pollution. So a lot of times uh, water coming into the wetland either from a stream or a river or runoff from rain depending on what type of wetland it is it will slow down when it hits this marshy vegetated area that water flow slows. And so heavier things, um, heavier solids uh, or particles, a lot of times which um, contain pollution, end up sinking to the bottom where they can get broken down. So water that goes into a wetland will actually come out the other end cleaner because these wetlands work like a filter. And in that sense, they're very important for helping us clean up our water, and they're also very important for our environment. So, that's a lot of information. Just to recap, uh, we talked about what a wetland is, and it is where land and water meet, or land that's wet. Um, we talked about the three things we need to make a wetland, which is water, soil and plants. We talked about um, the functions of our wetland. They provide food uh, and a habitat that animals can use as a nursery to raise young. Um, they provide uh, food for us as well, by the way. Rice and cranberries and things like that are grown in wetlands. Um, they provide uh, an area that can help soak up flood water or excess water and they help filter out pollution. So that's all very, very important stuff. And before we end this real quick, I did want to talk to you guys about different types of wetlands. We have lots of different types. I mostly wanted to point out um, that we have some wetlands like our prairie potholes, uh, vernal pools, which I don't see on this one, um, that are not necessarily year round. They are there for part of the year and then in the summer they dry up. So wetlands don't have to be full year. I also wanted to point out that wetlands can happen um, along the coast. Like here we have a salt marsh. So this is somewhere um, maybe along the Gulf of Mexico where the salty water meets the land. Where I used to live, we had mangrove forests, which were another type of wetland. And this, there's plants that are adapted to live in this amount of salty water. So that's another type of wetland, and those are also very important. All right, so we've covered our basis. In the next video, we are going to start talking about some wetland critters. See you next.